it's great to see everybody here. If Mac, can you come up and uh, introduce our guest, please? All righty, we don't have a whole lot of guests, but the ones we got, they are Cracker Jack. So, let me introduce first of all, Mr. Jack Powers, if you'll please stand. Hey, Jack. He's uh, retired in, from the insurance industry, is that right? Did I get that right? Yes. Insurance, okay. And he's a prospective member. We want to thank Don Pamebo for in, uh, inviting him to come and Sharon sitting in while Don's experiencing the flu, I believe. So kind of keep her in your thoughts. Uh, we also have Miss Susan Turk. Where is Susan? Hey, Susan. All right, guess where she's from. I'll give you the tagline. If it's too loud, you're too old. She's with Mad Mark Stereo down the road there. So, <laughs> so we want to thank you for coming. <laughs> uh, Maureen Chesson is here. Where is Maureen? All right, Maureen. She's, she's been here a couple times, but she's also with Easter Seals. And uh, we want to thank you for the kids that have been coming in and setting up the tables and stuff, too. They do a super job, and especially today. Apparently, it was quite, quite a job to get set up today, so it was good. And I believe that's it. Uh, I did want to mention one other thing, too. On your tables, you have a number of items. Make sure to take a look at them. Uh, Sharon's going to mention one of them. But uh, there's a flyer on there about the 90th anniversary of Camp Flying Eagle coming up in February. Just kind of put it in the back of your mind now and start thinking about it. Thank you. Thank you, Mac. As Sharon uh, makes her way up here, I want to let everybody know that uh, the board meeting this month is going to be tomorrow. We moved it up a week, uh, but it will be tomorrow at Pier 22. And with that being said, we're bringing up uh, Sharon Barharsh for a couple announcements. Hi, on your table is an exciting project that Youth Services is working with a bunch of partners in our community called Schools Plus Community Equals Success. I would like all the people that are on the Youth Services Committee to stand up because you're helping us put this all together. Come on, everybody, because we have United Way, Boys and Girls Club, Big Brothers, Big Sisters, the YMCA, all of them, plus additional partners, uh, and Manatee Community Foundation is going to help us. So all of these partners have come together to try to make a difference in both Rogers Garden and Daughtry Elementary. What we're looking for is minor commitment, one hour per week from October to May. It, you can do it in the before school from 7 to uh, 8 or after school from 4 to 5. I personally signed up. I'm really looking forward to it. I'm going to be matched with either a boy or a girl. We need 100 volunteers. So if any of you are interested, please see anybody on the committee or myself. Everybody has time for at least one hour a week to make a difference in a child's life. Isn't that what Kiwanis is all about? Yes. Thanks. Sure. Your, uh, Big Brothers, Big oh yeah, project. yeah. Okay, but Brent just reminded me um, we're hosting an event out at United Way on October 24th for anyone that's just sort of on the edge of thinking about a volunteer but doesn't know for sure if they really want to make that commitment. We have these wonderful children, over 40 of them, on what we call the ready to be match list for Big Brothers, Big Sisters. They don't have a mentor. So you can come out, this is a little party for them where they're gonna have Sunny's barbecue, carnival games, and pot potential volunteers are more than welcome to come out. And it's from five to 7.30 on October 24th. So another way to try it out, to see if you'd like it. It's kind of like a, a test drive. A test drive. Right, Neil, test, test drive? Test drive. Okay. <laughs> okay, uh, moving right along, uh, we only had four people turn in their um, committee preference sheet, so where is Christy and Mike? Christy and Mike, raise your hand. They're, go they're gonna be going around and trying to get y'all to sign up for committees uh, again. Now, if you're already on a committee, if you were on a committee last year, just let them know that you wanna continue with that committee. If you wanna try out another committee, uh, please let them know or turn in your preference sheet. Another reminder of uh, the save the date, like I said last week, is December 11th, is, will be our Braden and Kiwanis Christmas event right here at the hall. And with that, I'm going to have uh, Mike McCoy come up and introduce our guest speaker today. Good afternoon, Kiwanis. Uh, today's speaker is the new director, well actually new, he's two years in the role, 
to. He's the Director of Global Business Development for the Bradenton Area Economic Development Corporation, most of us know as the EDC. Um, he's in charge of all business development within Manatee County. And when I say global, I mean global. In the last two years, he has logged nearly 68,000 airplane miles. It's uh, going all over the world, and on behalf of us and our business community, to attract uh, businesses and industry to Manatee County. Prior to doing this, our speaker was the regional manager for international trade development for Enterprise Florida, and that's with the state of Florida. So we are very fortunate to have his expertise and experience working on behalf of our local business community. Um, ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Max Stewart uh, to the Braden and Kiwanis Club. Well, thank you, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here today. Um, as uh, uh, Bob Prosefield mentioned, I'm not Sharon Hillstrom, so I'm not the president and CEO of the, the Brain Center Economic Development Corporation. But um, I would be uh, remiss if I didn't actually uh, mention our current past chair to the Brain Center EDC, uh, Dr. Carol Prosefield. She's been a wonderful uh, person involved in what we do at the economic development. Uh, in Manatee County and also our county commissioners who support us really I saw Commissioner Benack was here there she is thank you so much for for doing what you do to help support economic development in Manatee County um, I'm going to give you just a little primer on what we do at the EDC um, and then I'll be available to answer some questions you have about what we're doing um, as Mike mentioned I've put 68,000 miles it's actually not two years it's actually this year I put 68,000 miles uh, overseas domestically uh, working to relocate businesses to Manatee County. Um, and over the last 10 years, we've done a pretty good job of doing that. So uh, real quick, first of all, what is the EDC? Um, the Brainton Area EDC is a nonprofit uh, 501c6 organization. Uh, we are recognized by Enterprise Florida, which is the state's economic development office, as the lead uh, organization for the Manatee County's nine communities. So within Manatee County, we're responsible for all the economic development within each of the cities that's also in Manatee County. Uh, we work directly with the state on a lot of the projects that come into the area, um, and I'll talk about a few of those in just a minute so you get a better idea. What we actually do, um, our job is to diversify the local economy. So we really want to find high-wage, high-skilled jobs that can come to Manatee County and people that can be employed in those jobs. So when we talk about uh, the high-skilled, high-wage jobs, we're talking about people with, you know, lead CNC machinists, um, engineers, architects, uh, mechanical engineers. Anybody with a high-skill, high-wage job is what we're really targeting at the EDC. Um, we also connect established businesses to the resources they need to grow. Most people think, yeah, we're out there just recruiting companies, but the major part of what uh, we do is actually helping local companies expand in the area. Believe it or not, of the 57 projects we've worked in the last two years, over 65% of those projects have been local companies expanding in the local area, growing, adding new jobs, creating another division, bringing another division here. Those types of things are what we do to help the local economy expand here in the area. So here's our three primary focus areas. One is business recruitment is where I sit, uh, business expansion, so a local company expanding, and also business retention. There's a lot of companies that call us and say, we've got to do something or we need to leave the area. We've just got to grow. So we actually set them up with the resources they need to actually retain those businesses in the area. That is actually the hardest part, is trying to keep a, a business here. How do, we, how do we make sure that they stay in the area and what can we do to make, make sure they succeed? So we have uh, a number of pillars that we work on. Our target sectors in Manatee County are um, what we see on the screen here. We don't actually go up and there's, there's, a, there's two approaches to economic development. One, there's the shotgun approach where you just start going out there and asking every company to come here, come here, come here, come here. It doesn't work. You've actually got to create clusters around companies in the area. How do you make your area to, to diverse? Is by actually creating similar types of companies. If you're a NASCAR fan, you've heard the term coopetition. That's the term we use uh, in, in economic development quite often, is because having competing companies be in the same area, they tend to grow faster together than they do alone, because they have opportunities to train a workforce better. There's better uh, talent that you can recruit here if you have more than one company in an area. And so we do a lot of that in a number of different sectors. The first is advanced manufacturing, 
We have a lot of that in, uh, in the Manatee County area. We do a lot of advanced manufacturing, all, everything from saffron all the way up to Feld Entertainment is in the advanced manufacturing space, and we'll talk a little bit about those in a second. Um, corporate operations, we have a number of corporate headquarters here. Did you know we have three uh, corporate headquarters in Manatee County for companies that are in the Fortune 500 list? It's a pretty good number of people to have. Um, it works global. Uh, Feld Entertainment's corporate headquarters is here, and we're also uh, working with uh, Air Products on their uh, operation out by the Port Manatee. So we have a lot of companies that are really in the, in the, the headquarters space that are really growing Manatee County um, very, very fast. The next area is distribution and logistics. Um, if you didn't know, we have a port in Manatee County, which is a very uh, rare thing in the United States to have a port in your county that works directly with your county uh, government. Um, there's only 15 seaports on the eastern seaboard that actually have a county connected to a government like this. So it's a very rare opportunity to have a port in your area and a port that actually does container shipments as well. So that's something we bank on uh, in the area. The, the next area is information technology. We have a lot of growing uh, need in the cybersecurity space, big data, with a lot of our colleges, and we focus a lot on information technology. Um, it's not information technology anymore. If you're in California or in Silicon Valley, it's tech. It's just tech. They drop the info. So if we, we say tech now uh, in that space, but we're recruiting a lot of tech companies to the area. A lot of it has to do with the resources we have at Ringling uh, and New College um, and also at uh, USF uh, and SCF. There's a lot of information in the tech space that we work with. Uh, life science is very important. If you've ever been to Ross Camp Institute um, in Manatee County, it's one of the lead organizations for Alzheimer's uh, and memory loss disease uh, research in the United States. A lot of people didn't know that, that we have this organization here that does this. And when we go overseas, um, or we go domestically to shows like Bio International, which is a huge show in Boston, uh, next month I'll be at Medica in Dusseldorf, Germany, working with companies that are looking to relocate to the Manatee County area, uh, working on that, that show. So those are some important things we have. And the last is sports performance. Um, it's not the last, it's actually one of our favorite because of IMG Academy. Um, IMG Academy and the Pittsburgh Pirates create a ecosystem for sports performance like no other in the United States. Where can you go and train a high school student who is at the top of his class and also go and find a baseball player or a football player at the top of their class um, and get the data from both of those points within a five mile radius? It doesn't happen anywhere else in the United States. Um, in fact, IMG is a, a great resource for us. We say the name IMG anywhere in the tennis community or anywhere in the baseball community and they listen because um, they want to be around IMG and they want to be around sports performance. So that is one of our core clusters uh, in Manatee County. And this is where we focus. So we don't focus in some other areas, but we really try to attract companies that fit in the clusters that we have in Manatee County. So how do we do this? On the, the global business development, it's all about personal, it's all about relationships, right? Business is all about relationships. Creating a great relationship and a great environment for a company to, to be in. And so we do a lot of personal outreach to corporate site selectors. We do a, a lot of personal outreach to the uh, organizations around the country who actually help recruit businesses to different areas. Uh, lawyers, CPAs, we put out a lot of information to those people and also to our state partners and making sure that they know what's going on in Manatee County as it relates to the business community. We do inbound and outbound trade missions and support a lot of inbound and outbound trade missions uh, in the area, uh, both consumer good business uh, trade missions, but also professional trade missions in the area. We do a lot of those. Uh, uh, also, we have a pretty robust uh, social media platform and social media strategy. Uh, we do a lot of different things with geo-targeting and geofencing and things that are way out of my league. But we also do, if you've seen it, uh, has anybody seen the monthly minute that the EDC puts out? Have you seen the, the EDC's monthly minute? So you, everybody needs to go to Dr. Probesfield's LinkedIn page and watch the EDC's monthly minute. It's good news about Manatee County. It's hard to find good news sometimes, and we put out some good news about Manatee County. What's going on? What companies are growing? We have three companies in Grove, Florida's 50 fastest growing companies list in Manatee County right now. So we're growing, and there's good news to tell, and we tell that story through social media and some of the social outlets we, we have uh, at our disposal. And also, we have a really compelling and rich content website. When people go to our website, um, and actually our new website, 
that comes out. We have to get a new website apparently every two years. It's like a new thing, right? If you're in the website business, you have to have a new website every two years. But we actually have a, a, a lot of data on our website about the metrics in Manatee County, about the properties that are available in Manatee County, how the data with labor and all that combines together to create a good property for a company in the fit in Manatee County. It's a really complex environment that we live in because there's a lot of data points that companies want to see and there's a lot of information that we have to provide. We also do a couple different things for our established businesses. Now, we coined a term called established businesses um, in Manatee County. We didn't like existing businesses that because you, just you're there, but we coined a term called established business because you are an established business in Manatee County, and we want to make sure that you stay here and succeed. We took that term to a conference of state, uh, state leaders uh, and actually national leaders called IEDC two weeks ago, and we mentioned we have a new established business program coordinator. Well, Monday morning, Sharon got home and uh, her phone started ringing. Tell us more about how you created an established business program in Manatee County. So companies, uh, EDCs now want to have an established business program instead of just existing business. So we've, we've, we're changing the tide and changing the, the, the curve about how we think about businesses, especially in Manatee County. Uh, we do a lot of workforce training grants and workforce improvements. We do a lot of industry roundtables in Manatee County with companies, specific companies, just the companies alone, to hear what their issues are and what things that they're dealing with. The number one issue, uh, as always, uh, is workforce, workforce development, workforce training, workforce housing, um, and a lot of the different things that go on. How do we keep employers with enough talent to retrain and attract those people in the area? Uh, we do a lot of site selection assistance for companies and for organizations who call us. A lot of demographic information, a lot of uh, data, labor data, uh, statistics data, infrastructure data, a lot of that stuff goes through us. And we put that into a package that's easy to read and accessible to site selectors and companies. And we do a lot of export and international trade. Uh, my background's in international trade and export, so we help companies who are looking to trade overseas um, and looking to import from overseas, what are the best trade routes for those companies? Um, and then one of the last things that we do on the agenda is the actual incentive process, helping companies with job performance incentives. Um, a lot of that is pretty much icing on the cake. A lot of people think that incentives are the number one thing we lead with when we, we recruit a company. It's actually not the number one thing we do at all. It's number five or six. Incentives are icing on the cake to help make sure that the company has a solid footing and has a, has a good relationship with the government and a good relationship with the community. Um, and so those are important factors to us when we're working with established businesses in the area. Uh, it's not us alone, and that's one of the things we talk about. It's a collaborative effort. Uh, to get any one company to move to Manatee County or to, to locate in Manatee County or expand, it's a big process and it, it requires a lot of heavy lifting and a lot of bodies in the room to get the, the job done. Um, I'll talk about it in just one minute, but uh, you know, to get a company in the area, you need to make sure you have your workforce partners at the table. You need to make sure that you have your um, educators at the table. You need to make sure you have your government leaders at the table, your port, your airport, everything that can get the job done to seal the deal, we bring to the table to get that, to get that through. And it helps, and it shows that we're a community that likes to collaborate and care. Um, and you don't get that in a lot of different communities. You get partners who sit in their silos, and we are very collaborative in Manatee County, and we really get the job done. So um, here's some of the things when we, we talked about just a minute ago, some of the issues when we talk about expanding a workforce or getting a workforce in the area. The number one issue what we talk about is the ability to recruit a skilled workforce. Um, labor costs are another big issue. Um, we want to make sure we have a pro-business climate in Manatee County. Uh, for the government, uh, from the government all the way down to the, the local government, to the services that they provide, we want to make sure that we are pro-business and there to support them and help them in what they need to do. Um, we want to make sure that we're at access to a larger consumer market for those companies. Um, the Tampa Bay region, I don't know if anybody uh, has seen the data, but the Tampa Bay region currently has about 4.8 million people, and that's from Sarasota all the way up to Hernando County. By 2030, that number will grow to 6.8 million people. So in the next 12 years, we're going to add 2 million people to this economy and this market. And so there's a lot of things that we have to do to make sure that we grow correctly uh, and we help facilitate that growing uh, to make sure that we can land companies here and make sure that this consumer market is big for the area. Um, desirable real estate is another thing that you don't see in a lot of places. Uh, real estate where there's actual chance to grow. A lot of communities are restricted. They don't have any more land. So we are one of the few communities um, and in the nation that has a lot of land to grow that's close to a water, close to a seaport. So there's a lot of opportunities for us to expand uh, in Manatee County and grow the area. So how does this stack up? 
how do we stack up as Manatee County? You've probably heard a, a couple of these. If you've been into an executive briefing or you've heard the EDC speak before, we, we make this pitch a lot, but it's very important to remember some of these points that we talk about. Um, we are a strategic location on the west coast of the, of the state of Florida with a 4 million person population access to a 4 million person population market. We are within one hour drive of three international airports. We have Port Manatee, which is the closest deep water seaport to the Panama Canal. We have workforce training grants and we have recruitment assistance that we can provide um, to the brain, from the Bradenton area EDC from our community. Um, we have universities, colleges, medical and technical schools in this area like no other. There are seven colleges in Manatee County and the surrounding area that work together on a collaborative program called um, uh, Cross College Alliance. Thank you, Dr. Brofield. Had it right there in the tip of my tongue. Um, so we have the Cross College Alliance, which is a great program for students to be able to take courses at different universities and different colleges in the area, cross culture, so cross borders. So if you're a student at one college, you can take a program course at Ringling if you need to. If you need to take something at New College or at SCF, there's a lot of different ways to do that in, uh, in our area. We have a year-round sports and recreation um, amenities for companies, especially in the sports performance world. Try doing outdoor sports in Nebraska in the middle of January. Not a fun task. Great task in the middle of January in Florida. It's like 70 degrees and sunny. Um, you've ever seen the Nike sports performance out at Premier? Uh, Nike hosts their big competition in January. Uh, the U.S. Soccer Under-21 tournament happened uh, here. Sorry, the, the FIFA under 21 tournament happened here a couple months ago, happens in January and February. It's a great time to be out in the market in the, those times of the year. We have a really robust cultural scene. As a lot of you have seen, there's a lot of cultural amenities growing up in the area from the craft breweries to the downtown scene to the islands um, to Lakewood Ranch. So you have a lot of opportunities in a cultural scene to grow and you have a really great business friendly environment. And the number one thing that we get and the number one tool, and this is uh, something that we tell companies all the time, the most invaluable thing we can offer a company when they move here is rapid response permitting. Now you might think, well, that's why. If I have an architect in the room or a builder in the room, a rapid response permit, an opportunity to get a permit to build a facility in as little as 54 days is unheard of in a lot of different places around this country. So the ability to have our rapid response team from the county government available to work a project all the way through has been invaluable. It's priceless. We, we consider it like the visa commercial, you know, the priceless thing. This is what it is to a lot of companies who are looking to grow because they know they can get a project done fast, on time, and deliver it for what they need. So let's talk about a few of those companies that have used that rapid response permitting in the, in the past. Most of you know, if you've been out to Port Manatee, there's a company called Air Products and Chemicals that built a facility um, and that was looking in the area. You might have heard this story before, but if you didn't, I'll share it with you again because it's a great story. Air Products and Chemicals makes a LNG heat exchanger. This piece of equipment right there is 200 feet long and sometimes and a diameter of 16 feet and weighs over 700,000 pounds, built right here in Manatee County. The story behind this project goes they were looking to come to the state of Florida because they wanted to be closer to a port and they chose Port Manatee and they were looking at Port Tampa. Well, it just so happens they went to Port Manatee, saw the land around Port Manatee and looked across the road and could see the port, entrance to the port where all the ships were, straight route. Where they currently are in Pennsylvania, it's a four and a half day drive to get from their facility to the port of Pennsylvania and it takes $250,000 to do that. It's like a tank of gas here in Manatee County to do that pretty much. They just walk the thing across the street and they're in the port. So these are some of the assets we have in Manatee County that make it strategic for us to go after some of these big companies. Another company that's a smaller company that we work with, we work not just with big companies, we work with startups as well, a company called Verde GSE which makes the Jetway air conditioning systems. If you've ever been on a Jetway and it's been really, really hot, it's because Verde did not make their, their air conditioning system on their own. So uh, Verde makes air conditioning systems for airplanes, so the thing that hooks up under the airplane, but also for the jetway. They do that right here in Manatee County. They have orders for uh, the uh, LaGuardia Airport, for the airport in Toronto. They're doing stuff for California, for the islands. They do a lot of business. And in fact, they told us recently they are at a point where they just can't grow anymore. They need to like slow down and not stop taking orders because they're just so busy. 
Um, so they are a great startup organization. Again, somebody that came from a career and now is back in another career and, uh, and moved to the area. Um, and of course, IMG Academy. We've talked a little bit about this. They are a great win for Manatee County. Their growth in Manatee County has been spectacular. 500-acre uh, campus, they put $197 million capital investment into Manatee County. And also, they have a new hotel that just uh, is about to open up uh, right across the street from IMG. So that's a great win for Manatee County as well. The other big one I'll, I'll mention is uh, Feld Entertainment, which hosts Monster Jam, right? And also for my two-year-old is Mickey on Ice, which is the greatest thing ever created for him. Um, we went to one of the premieres, and he has not stopped talking about Mickey. That was uh, a month and a half ago. So he still talks about Mickey every single day on ice. But they do a lot of entertainment venues. They were a corporate relocation from Vienna, Virginia. They moved to Manatee County, where they had a, a, a facility. And then two years later, they moved into actually the old Siemens building. So if you've ever been by the old Siemens building, which is now the, the Feld Entertainment building, uh, they brought their Aurora division, which is Monster Jam, down to Florida. So now they, all the trucks that are used in Monster Jam around the country are manufactured or rebuilt here in Manatee County. Great win for the, the area. So what does that mean to you? What does all this mean? Well, we asked Feld to talk about what's the impact of Feld Entertainment on the Manatee County area. And they came up with these numbers. And these are their numbers, not ours. They told us this. Um, real estate or, or, or leased, leased or owned real estate in Manatee County, just in Manatee County, $45 million in the last year. Vehicles purchased or leased in Manatee County, $10 million just in the past year. Um, their 20-year projected economic impact to Manatee County is $7.5 billion. So they are a great success story for Manatee County, and it wouldn't be without the help of our partners in government, um, and our partners at the local level and our collaborative effort here in Manatee County that we would not have been able to bring all these different divisions from Feld down to Manatee County. So this is a great win for the area. So what are our 2017 uh, results? I'll just give you these really, really quick because I know we're getting short on time. Um, we had 400 direct interactions with companies in Manatee County, 100 on-site visits from our established business program, uh, 38 businesses in Manatee County uh, participated in our key business sector roundtables, and we provided over access to over $250,000 worth of workforce training grants, grants in Manatee County in 2017-2018. How does that equal out on the international side? Well, the global business development side, we had about 12,000 visitors to our website, 5,000 people we reached on social media, and from all of that, we got about 14 qualified leads. Uh, in Manatee County. Of those 14 qualified leads, we were able to define five prospects for Manatee County, and we were able to bring two projects of those five prospects to Manatee County with a jobs and capital investment in Manatee County. Now, if you're in the sales pipeline, 14 to two is a really good number. That's a really good return on investment. So we've done uh, a pretty good job of getting companies to come to Manatee County, see the area, see the vision, and actually relocate their companies to Manatee County. We are in the process of working with a couple other companies on their announcements that should be coming out very, very shortly. Um, so more companies who will be moving to Manatee County or have made an opportunity to move to Manatee County. Um, our economic impact since 2009, we have completed 87 projects at about $2 billion worth of wages in Manatee County and about 5,800 jobs, um, $650 million worth of capital investment. That's all in the last 10 years. That's a pretty good number for a, an economic development organization of our size. To give you a picture of that and why we talk about this in Manatee County, imagine you had an 8-ounce pie and a 16-ounce pie. This is the way we think about this. Um, I like pie. I go to Yoder's quite frequently, which is not good for me, but I like pie. So if you have an 8-ounce pie and you have a quarter of the slice, imagine what happens when you have a 16-ounce pie and you still have a quarter of the slice. The value that we provide to the business community in the area, if, you, if your business grows, and the community grows with it, you're going to get a bigger piece of the pie. You might still have the same slice, but it'll be a bigger piece of the pie in the area. We talk about how that creates value for the businesses. As the community grows and as the economy grows and gets bigger, the, the market share might stay the same, but your market share value will increase exponentially over that. So we talk about how that uh, really works with businesses in Manatee County, how investing with the, in the area and investing in Manatee County works. Just to give you an idea of wage comparison, the average wage of Manatee County in 2016, this is a little outdated because we haven't gotten the census numbers back from 17 yet, was $40,086. That's the average wage of everything in Manatee County. The average wage of the programs that we worked, the projects that we worked in Manatee County was $61,500, a 53% increase in the average wage. 
That's the average wage of the projects we worked in, in, the, in the last year. So you can see that there's a big benefit to really investing in economic development, investing in targeting high sector, high wage companies in Manatee County. Um, how that results uh, to a couple different areas, we actually took our numbers from 2017 um, and looked at a couple different sectors, uh, our targeted sectors, just to give you an idea. Um, there are 2,600 jobs that we've actually worked with uh, in our targeted sector, um, and, and the wages equaled about $128 million. Um, in tech, it's about 450 jobs, $27 million. Life sciences, 380. That's 21 million. That number will be surpassed already this year, by the way, in life sciences, because um, we've had a couple of new recruitments to the area through the core project at uh, Lakewood Ranch, but also near Ross Camp. Uh, logistics, 181 jobs have been in the targeted sector we've recruited. It's about 6.7 million. Advanced manufacturing, 1,358 jobs in advanced manufacturing. We put a lot of emphasis on that. And sports performance, 307. Um, roughly, that equals about 5,000 jobs in Manatee County um, in, the, in the last couple years with, an, with a total wage comparison of about $271 million. So those are a lot of jobs and a lot of wages to Manatee County that have come through the economic development programs in our targeted sector and we really hold those in high regard. We had a five-year strategic plan. We're on year two and a half, right, Dr. Probstfield? Two and a half, three years. She's our, new, she's our task force chair for the next year, so we're working on that diligently to make sure we follow our plan. Uh, when you put a plan in place, you should follow it, and so we really think we believe we, we should follow that plan pretty closely. Um, and there are a number of things that I'll leave you with um, on this, but um, our consultants' observations of Manatee County in this area are the sky is the limit. Um, do you realize what you have here? You have a port, you have an airport, you have a classification right outside in a huge MSA. You have the opportunity to grow and expand and be a resource for companies that need to look for a U.S. location or a new location for their business. Um, we, are, we are the business address for the South Tampa Bay region. We are the South Tampa Bay region. We are what the business address is looking for. We're not a downtown Tampa, but if you want to be out a little farther away, this is the great location for your business to be. We are the next culturally cool place in the region to be in downtown Bradenton and Lakewood Ranch. This is the culturally cool place. I'm 36 years old. I won't mind giving away my age, but this is a cool place to be. Um, there's a lot of young people moving to Manatee County. I mean, this is a great place to be. And so as we continue to build on the cultural resources we have, that's what gets companies to look here. The cultural benefits to an employee are very important to a business owner when they're looking to move a business or locate a division in an area, and that's what we have to be. We are well positioned to own life sciences on the west coast of Florida with our core project, with Ross Camp, with the number of medical device manufacturers we have in Manatee County and the number of medical device companies we have. This is important for us. And the last thing I'll mention, uh, the last two, is the presence of IMG, the Pittsburgh Pirates, and other sports performance assets is vital to our area. And Port Manatee, we have land, which around a port, if you go to another port in the state of Florida, nobody's got land. We have land to build on and land to develop, and that's what companies are looking for. That's when I go overseas to Taiwan and talk to logistics and distribution companies. This is what they want to see as land. So with that, um, I won't talk a lot about this because I know we're getting out of time, but we do uh, one thing. It's called our 941 Next series. Craig Wojcicki and I'm the assistant GM for the Braves and Marauders and Pirates Spring Training from New Jersey. I went to school at the University of Tampa and then I got this opportunity to come work um, in Bradenton for the Pirates and the Marauders so I moved uh, to Nancy County. There's so many good things to do um, just from being outside enjoying the weather, um, great beaches, um, great bars, restaurants, entertainment areas so there's just a ton of fun things to do in this area. Karen Hillstrom. I'm Max Stewart. And this is your monthly minute for August 2018. Sponsored by Element Commercial Construction. And for a change of pace, we're back home in our office in Bradenton, Florida.
August is back to school month to in school. Florida, in particular in the Bradenton area. So we've got some great news from our higher ed institutions. Max, let's talk about Ringling College of Art and Design. Ringling College of Art and Design has a virtual reality degree. And one of the things we saw at both Bio International and at Farnborough is the use of virtual reality in the daily workplace, in the workplace environment. So having this degree program to create artists and designers is a big asset for us in the, in the Bradenton area. Workforce possibilities. It's awesome. Uh, State College of Florida is in the news. They are offering a weekend college program for college. working people. So eliminating that barrier for people that have, you know, full-time jobs but want to improve their skill set mm -hmm. by taking some college level courses. So Kudos to State College of Florida for creating the Weekend College program. Another program, the University of South Florida, Sarasota Manatee, has created a cybersecurity and information technology program. Cybersecurity, information technology, big wow. things we have here. That's what we want to talk about in the news, and that's what we want to talk about, cybersecurity. Excellent. And then wrapping it up, Manatee Technical College, one of our favorites, offers um, advanced manufacturing and production technology program. And also, by the way, we're one of the first in the state of Florida to receive the grant from the governor for the Workforce Infrastructure Grant Program. So um, great news from our higher ed institutions. Max, do you have anything else you want to add? I think that's it for this month. This okay. monthly minute is over. So we'll see you next month. We uh, do a lot of different things in entertainment, uh, working with the city of Palmetto. We do a lot of things on sports performance. Uh, we did a big campaign for the World Rowing Championships last year and did a really cool video. With We did a whole bunch of advertising of, around sports performance in the area. Um, we have a couple targets um, that we have, uh, 60 businesses in the area, 11 startups, 4,000 new jobs. This is our 2020 plan, uh, how many businesses we want to create. We are listed as one of the best small economic development organizations in the entire country. Um, and we wouldn't do it without our amazing partners and sponsors. Um, with, uh, with all of our investors at the, the EDC, this is very important to us. So with that, I know I, I want, a little over time, close. Ask for, questions. Ask for questions, great. Does anybody have any questions for me for the, yes? What, uh, when you go out to talk to these various businesses that, that you feel are appropriate to locate, relocate in Manatee County, who are our biggest competitors? So a lot of ours are in, are, are, the question was who are our biggest competitors uh, with, with like city-wise or county-wise? Yeah, uh, that are your relocation. Yeah, so we, we do a lot of uh, battles with um, Tennessee, some of the areas in Tennessee that are starting to get culturally cool, like Franklin, Tennessee. Um, I, we work a lot in the sports performance industry, so California has a big uh, sports performance sector with a lot of companies out there. New York has a lot of access to those, so we do a lot of stuff with some of the communities in there. Um, we are, you know, we're not, we know we're not Orlando and Miami. Those are the Mickey Mouse and the Miamis. Everybody knows those if you're in those areas. Um, but we are the, the, the next cool place to go. A lot of our recruitment targets come from Pittsburgh. A lot of that access to spring training, a lot of companies are interested in, you know, the corporate, see, you don't, you don't realize how many corporate CEOs come down here for spring training to watch the Pittsburgh Pirates take their vacation and go, geez, I want to stay here. I get more calls in January and February from people going, I'm on a golf vacation in Florida, get me out of Chicago. Um, so those are the types of things we deal with a lot. But ours are a lot of those communities that are right outside some of the big metro metropolitan areas. Those are the, the kind of our targets and our uh, competitors in that area. Any other questions? Yes. How about the change with Enterprise Florida? How is that affecting you in a competitive light against the other states? 
So that, that's a very good question. So for most of you that, that don't know, Enterprise Florida is our state partner in uh, economic development. Um, a lot of the changes that have come over in the last couple of years with um, the way incentives are, are, are done at the state level, a lot of that talk is, 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 is not what companies really want to hear. They want to hear just, you know, the, you're staying constant. A lot of the interest, though, is on our, um, the new infrastructure program because a lot of companies think this is unique. If a community can get involved in the Jobs Growth Grant Fund, which is the governor's $85 million pot for workforce and training, that really helps build communities up in the area. So if we can come up with creative ideas for the Workforce Infrastructure Program, the new Jobs Growth Grant Fund, that really gives us a leg up on, uh, on different communities. The first Job Growth Grant Fund was awarded to Manatee Technical College. Of all the programs, Manatee Technical College won that for an advanced Advanced Manufacturing and Production Technologies Program, which is vitally important to companies like R&D Automation, to Saffron, to a lot of those companies. So that program in and of itself um, is, has been a big a benefit to us when we can announce that the first growth grant fund announcement was made in Manatee County at Manatee County Technical College for a job for a, a program for advanced manufacturing. So those are important key factors for us. We still have all the basic incentives at the state level, the QTI, which is the Qualified Targeted Industry Program, which is a tax uh, rebate on the jobs that you create. So the taxes that you pay into the program, um, you actually get those back based on the, the jobs, the average wage and the capital investment of your company. Um, but really we haven't seen much uh, of a downturn in that. It's just really, we're getting into a market where it's really tight right now and there's a lot of need to be very creative at the local level to match what the state does to make sure that we get the right companies in Manatee County. Hope that answers that question fairly well. So, well with that, thank you all so much for letting me speak. It's been a pleasure and um, any questions I'll answer afterwards. Thank you. Thanks, Max. As a tradition of the <laughs> Braden and Kiwanis Club, and I've heard this for 25 years, and now I'm finally going to say this, a golden rule to measure your future success. Oh, thank you so much. All right. That's great. Thank you. Thank you, guys. We'll review a, a few announcements from, from earlier. Remember, there's a board meeting tomorrow at Pier 22. And that is a reschedule of the meeting that was scheduled next week. So that's tomorrow. Um, the United Way and Welcome Mat Services will host a Big Brothers Big Sisters event. So remember that. How many of y'all serve on a committee, a Kiwanis committee? Okay. Make sure you turn in your committee volunteer preference sheet. And if you don't, Christy's going to come by and see you. <laughs> She's going to come by and see you anyway. And then finally, uh, make sure you guys save the date for December 11th. That's the uh, big Bradenton Kiwanis Christmas event. And it'll be right here at Kiwanis Hall. So with that, uh, we are adjourned. <laughs>